All right, in today's video, we're going to do a seller ant tutorial. So welcome in. My name is Andrew, if you don't know by now. So I'm about $2.8, $2.9 million in sales. It changes all the time. I uh, started a little over two years ago, but now I'm going to give you guys a seller ant tutorial and show you exactly what tools I use and why I use it in my business and how I use it in my business and how you can implement it in your business to make a lot of money. The reason you're watching this is because you want to make a lot of money. So let's get straight into it. So first thing, we're going to selleramp.com. Literally just selleramp.com, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna go ahead and look at their pricing. Pricing is uh, straightforward here. Uh, you can do the monthly option if you're not sure if you want to get serious with this yet. Um, if you're still in the you know consideration, or if you're in one of those modes of I don't know if I want to do Amazon FBA yet, or maybe you're doing Amazon FBA. Screw it. Let's go ahead and get the annual. The monthly. It's going to be a good idea to start at the $20 a month mark. Now, you only have a 1,000 lookups for that. Basically, what that means is every single time you come onto an Amazon listing, this right here counts as a lookup. So now I'll have 999 more of those, basically. Uh, you're going to run through that very quick if you're a serious Amazon seller and you're actually trying to do this and make money from that. Uh, so in that case, you're going to need the $27.95 a month. Now, you do get a free 14-day trial. I don't endorse Seller Amp, but I do use it because they... You know, do a lot of cool things with it. Uh, let's also look at the features really quick here. Just really briefly. So there's three tools and one product, basically. Um, side by side view, on the go mobile app, and then the full screen view with the web app as well. I don't really use the mobile app because I don't go into stores and scan stuff. Um, just not my thing. Don't like to do retail arbitrage, but I do use the side by side comparison uh, in the Chrome extension, which is what you're going to see right here. And I do use the full screen. Uh, via web app, and I'll show you which one I use each for and what the use cases are for. Uh, you can also set your objectives and costs if you want. So if you want to go ahead and preset, um, you know, how much ROI you want to make, how much profit you want to make. My minimum profit I accept is a uh, $3 profit. My minimum ROI is a 25%. Uh, SAS smart search, basically. So this, this is an amazing way, basically. Um, that you can do so on a website product page literally all you have to do is just right click and do seller amp SAS search and it's going to come up this is an amazing use, use. so let's go to hibbit.com really quick there we go all right let's find this specific product right here so if i say hey i want to find this specific product you can just right click this right here um, and then you can do seller amp SAS smart search that's what this feature is and over here it's going to look for the pic picture basically and it's going to try to match this specific picture uh on amazon now this is looks like a brand new launch of a shoe so it's not even on amazon yet so it probably be not the best example to use if we just go into uh a normal category let's go to these adidas samas for example what is these black ones right here if we want to say hey let's search this on Celerium sas we're going to right click we're going to click Celerium uh sas smart search and then boom, you can see it opens up right here. And you can see this shoe is literally right here. Um, and it gives you a couple different options for kind of how it looks. This also could be it as well. Um, actually, I think this is exactly it right here. Um, but it doesn't matter. You can open up which, which one you want to see. You can open up to the Amazon store. And boom, you can see if it's the exact same one, which it looks like to me. It is except for the little blue label right there. Um, it looks like this one right here might not have the blue label. It has the black label. So this is probably the exact one. Now. That's just one feature. Just come down here. You can use it for storefront search stalking. That's exactly what I do. And also you can use it to access your analyst history, which is also a very important way to track your VA's progress. So when you hire a virtual assistant and you're thinking to yourself, cool, how do I make sure they're not working for their Amazon sellers? How do I make sure they're not sharing leads? It should be very common and it should be like practical standard like SOP for every single person that is a business owner and you have a virtual assistant actually sourcing for you for you to be checking their seller amp SaaS history that's another reason i use it because i can see how many product lookups they've had generally i want to see anywhere between 150 to 250 product lookups per day sourcing if they only did 10 or 15 and they sent you 10 leads they're sharing leads or they're getting those leads from somewhere else they're not actually sourcing for you so congratulations that'll save you a lot of headache so i'll show you how to use that as well um, again don't use mobile speed matters this is super important as well um enables com comprehensive analysts so basically you can put your cost price in it's going to show you exactly step by step what your profit is what your ro is automatically and you can also adjust the sell price too to 
depending on what you think the 80-20 rule is on the buy box. If you don't know what the 80-20 rule is yet, you will soon and into more videos if you keep following me along or watch more of my videos. Uh, you also have something called the panel alerts. This shows you if it's hazmat, restricted, dangerous goods, all that good jazz. And keep in mind, it has an IP analysis. Don't use this to heart. It's not obviously 100% accurate. I don't even know if it's accurate at all, honestly. So I don't necessarily use it for IP. It is there. You don't really look at it. I use IP alert for that. Um, if you want IP alert, I'm going to drop it right here below. So I'll make a note of that. IP alert. It's going right here below in this video. Um, and you can actually get a discount. Offers panel. This is where actually we're going to start the storefront stalking process. We're going to find somebody realistically that looks kind of similar to us. We're going to click them. Like for example, this person right here has 24 in stock. They're priced competitively. They're probably winning a high majority of the buy box share. You can click them, open up their storefront, and it's going to show you that specific tab I was showing you earlier, where it's going to show you the full screen tab and kind of give you the entire breakdown here. Okay. Now, of course, we have a profit calculator as well. Um, we have a ranks. It's going to show you all the specific ranks. Profit calculator. It's going to show you the actual fees, Amazon fees, which is kind of important because most people don't understand that there's a lot of Amazon fees associated, obviously, with selling on Amazon. You can't just buy a product for $10 and sell for $15. You're actually going to lose money because you have a fulfillment fee right here. And you also have the referral fee. Okay. Now, the referral fee is going to be generally 15% of your actual item on Amazon. The FBA fee is the actual fba fee of them actually shipping it to the customer that's going to include the shipping cost so keep that in mind uh, let's keep going here chart panel it shows you a keep it your graph we're not going to use this because it doesn't show you in high detail what we need to know in keep a graph and if you've already watched my keep it training you know i'm a keepa nerd i love keepa and keepa is the goat so we're not even going to use this don't worry about that again not going to use it. It's this right here is not the goat. The actual keeper is the real goat. All right, notes and tags. This is kind of how I use my VA's automated system. So basically, if a VA finds a lead, they can click add note right here. They'll put the note in, um, and then they can also export uh, to a specific spreadsheet. So for example, I would put my VA's lead right here. So if her name is Abigail, I would put Abigail right here. She's going to see her name. She's going to click her name. At that point, it's going to record the lead into a spreadsheet exactly like so. Now, I'm not going to show you that feature step by step. I will kind of give you a basic breakdown, and you can set these features inside SellerAmp, but it's going to be pretty self-explanatory. You can have the export date, the image, the product name, ASIN. There's a, like 20 or maybe not even 20. There might be like 40 or 50 different options. I have a pretty basic, though. Generally, all I want to know is a couple of things. I want to know the product name. I want to know the ASIN, the Amazon URL, the cost price, sell price. ROI, profit margin, then I also want to know the uh, buy link as well. Now, I'm going to show you the BQL repricing central integration. It has that, so that's fantastic that you can use that for. And then, of course, there's a bunch of other different things here as well. It would take us forever to keep going through these. I don't use Arbitrage Hero. I used it before. I'm not a fan. Again, a bunch of different stuff. It shows you other stuff that we really don't necessarily really care about and that we're not really specifically going to use. Okay, so once you're going to get in, to your seller ramp, it's going to show you, this is going to be the homepage first off. So you're going to have the history, you're going to have the Google Sheets, as I was mentioning earlier, and you're going to have your specific account. Again, I would go and start the $20 account. We're good to go now. Now, once you have your Amazon account up and running, or you're just on amazon.com's dashboard, um, and you're looking up a specific product, once you add seller ramp as a Chrome extension up here, you're just going to go to seller ramp you know, Chrome extension. It's pretty easy to add. Literally, you can add it right here, I believe. It says, I don't need to get this out of the way here. I'm having trouble getting out of the way, but you can just add it right here. If this is the App Store, click this. It's going to take you so you can download the Chrome extension. Now, this is Keeper right here. So this is pretty daunting. If you scroll down right here, it's going to show you a bunch of different data that we just specifically talked about. Now, if you're doing it from a sourcing standpoint, the first thing you need to look for is the cost price. So you can say, hey, I can buy this for $14.15. Now, I'm not going to give you an entire breakdown here, but we could if we wanted to. This realistically is selling for about $24.75 right now. If I could get this for $14.15, it does not meet my ROI criteria. And you can actually see that right here. That's why it is in red. Now, if we change this to like $12, now it's going to reach my ROI criteria, and it's also going to reach my profit criteria. So now it's in the green. Now, if you can, you can also change the buy box as well. Now, keep in mind, this is a spiked price at $24. 
75. Over the last four or five months, it's realistically been about $23. So safe to say you need to be able to sell for $23. And again, it doesn't reach my ROI standards. But now if I got this for $10, and boom again, it reached my ROI standards and my profit margin. And you can also see that all the bars are in green. So easy way to sell. So I was going to tell you if you're eligible to sell the brand or not. And then you can just go on to Amazon. Now, if it does not show yes or no here, it's because you have not integrated Seller Amp with your Seller Central dashboard. Super easy to do that as well. Just follow the steps online on their main website and it'll direct you to it. Now, if you scroll down, another thing I'm, what I'm going to like to do is I'm also going to like to use this for storefront stocking. Again, here are all the fees that we mentioned earlier. We have the referral fee, which is, again, you can see right here above the price of $10. It's going to be 15%. The FBA fee of 450, which is actually shipping to the customer, handling, warehouse, all that good jazz. Now, these are my specific sheets that I use. So, for example, if I mentioned earlier, if Abigail was right here, Abigail's, Abigail is literally going to be able to click this link right here. And it's going to export all this into a spreadsheet, kind of what I was showing you earlier in the feature section. It's going to look exactly like this. Now, you do need to integrate google integration with seller amp you can easily do that by coming to your account right here and go going to settings i believe actually no, i apologize you're going to go to google sheets right here you're going to click setup now once you come to google sheets setup you're going to need to connect your google account okay so and at that point once you connected to your google account you're going to want to edit your sheet now editing your sheet can be as simple as putting the exact field mappings that you want in there this is a bad example right here. Let's go to a different Google Sheet right here. And we're just going to use this example as BA spreadsheet. So these are exact my exact field mappings. Again, all I care about the date, what the product name is, the ASIN, the Amazon URL, the cost price, sell price, profit, ROI, last note, and empty. Now, last note right here specifically, this is actually generally where we put uh, the buy link in there. That way it's always there. So I know exactly where my product source is from. Just an easy way for me to keep that up. The easiest way to find it is literally just come right here. So for example, if I found this specific product right here, let's press the Google button. We're going to come to It's all about going to come to Google guys. How freaking awesome is that? Let's say I found this right here and this was the buy link right here. All I have to do is put copy and paste. Then I'm going to come back to the Amazon link. I'm going to scroll down to seller amp and if this is where i'm getting it from i'm just going to add it as a note and i'm going to click save and then when i click somebody's name right there as the cows i was just showing you it's going to actually appear in the spreadsheet okay so it's going to give you the amazon url and also where you're going to be buy it from in the spreadsheet and this is all going to be in order step by step exactly as it looks right here so um that's the easiest way to do that and that's the easiest way to connect it to your google account now so we can also look at history. I'm not going to show you my history because it's got a, a bunch of personal information in there. But again, earlier, as I said, this is a great way to track specifically what your VA is doing. If you have multiple VAs, I would spread them up, spread them across multiple seller AMP accounts. That way you can individually track each one. Unless you trust them, then you can put them both in one seller AMP SaaS account. But for the most part, I would put them in multiple different SaaS accounts. All right, let's go back to Amazon here. Now, one of my favorite uses of Seller Amp is doing something called storefront stalking. Now, you probably know storefront stalking by clicking this right here, coming in, and then clicking on somebody's storefront and being able to see their storefront. So, for example, if we wanted to see this person's storefront right here. It's going to show us this. We can click storefront, and we can actually source through their products that they're looking at right now. Now, that's the old way of storefront stalking. We're not going to do that because it's too time intensive. So... What we're going to do is we're going to be able to see a bunch more data just by doing it through Seller Amp. So once we think we we said, you know what, this product is a good online arbitrage product or a wholesale product, I'm going to source these people because these people probably know what they're doing. We're going to scroll down here. We're going to look for the live offer count. And we're going to find something that's kind of related to us. Now, some this is not a storefront stocking um, or this is not a source, uh, sourcing you know, video. So I'm not going to really go into basically all the details that I'm going to look at. I do want to show you the features of it. So we're going to go ahead and click this FBA. Then we're going to have their link right here. Now, right here is their actual storefront name, which is going to be right here. Um, also too, as well, we're going to see immediately what brands they're carrying. We're going to see what categories there are. 
how many reviews they had. They had 25,000 reviews, probably a giant wholesaler, and they had 384 ASINs. So if they had that many reviews, they only had that little of ASINs, that means they're doing high volume generally for the most part, probably on the majority of their listings here. Now at this point, I'm only gonna source them if obviously it makes sense to me. Now, keep in mind again, I can see a bunch of different things right here off the top and know if I wanna source it. So for example, I can see my max cost, I can see what the current person is trying to sell it at. Um, and I can also see what the current buy box is. So it looks like actually they have the buy box or they match the buy box at least. Um, so that's another use of seller in it. Now, now that we're back into Amazon here, um, if we scroll down, we can also see the history when we actually looked at this specific product. So you can see here that I actually looked at this exact product earlier in February, February 2nd of 2024. And I looked at it again. Now, when I say I looked at it, this is probably not me looking at it. This is probably my virtual assistant looking at it for me. And they're looking at it multiple different times to see if the sale price and cost price has changed. They had the same cost every single time, which is fourteen fifteen. dollars Now, at one point, they were saying it, it was selling for $26. And at that point, it might have made some sense, but I doubt it. Yeah, so at that point, it's a 23% return on investment. And this also might be hazmat. This is, yep, says dangerous goods right here. So this is probably not even counting the shipping to Amazon. Once you count the shipping to Amazon, this ROI is going to be too low. So this is something I probably never bought before. But again, at the same time, it shows you the history of this. And this is actually really cool here. I use this all the freaking time. You wouldn't think so. But as time goes on, you're going to realize that this cost is going to consistently keep going up and down, up and down. And so you can look back at historical times and say, you know what, man, I found this up for $12 at one point. Right now it's 15 So we always talk about building a moat on Amazon when it comes down to finding the cheapest price. So if this price, my cost price now is several dollars higher than what it used to be, that's issue for concern. We should maybe think to ourselves, cool, maybe we don't have the cheapest price. Maybe we should go look elsewhere and keep digging into where we can find this for a cheaper price. So it's kind of what I use the history for. It's really great. And also just a lot of great knowledge here. And again, I would put my note right here. I'm going to use this right here for my VA. So all my VAs use this to export to their spreadsheets. It makes it super simple on them. And that's exactly what I use Seller Ant for. Now, as you're sourcing, again, the easiest thing to do if you just want to find this product online, press the Google button. You're going to come here. You're going to try to find it. If you can't find it, you're just going to go on to the next product. Now, obviously, if you're storefront stalking and doing a very basic sourcing method that's on YouTube, that's basically everywhere then you can just keep doing that same process over and over again. Open up an Amazon link, click the Google button here, put in your cost price, sell price. Does it make sense? Yes, no. Go on to the next product. That's as simple as it is. And that's what I, exactly what I use Celeram for. That's how I track everything on the back end. That's how I track my VAs. That's how I integrate it with Google. And that's how I use it to my success and how I've done $2.9 million in sales. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, if you have not followed me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. Also follow me on Twitter. I'll have all those links down here below and peace out.